today we are here to talk about the ancient Vedic civilization, its history, its culture, its mythologies and everything. The basic concept with any religious concept of, or any uh, civilizational concept and the problem that all these concepts are facing today is with science. When any religious concept is coming in contact with science, it's failing miserably to answer the questions of science. And that's why the youth, the young people, are rejecting so-called religious concepts. But if you look at the ancient Indian civilization, the ancient Vedic civilization, you will find that science, scientific temper, rationality, and spiritual enlightenment, and the spiritual consciousness were always married to each other. There was no divorce between, say, reason and faith. They went hand in hand. And that is why, that is precisely why the sages, the ancient rishis of India, had achieved so much. How were they able to do this? First, let's take a couple of examples here. And Today, the science that baffles all of us, astronomy. I like to begin today's discourse with that science. It's very interesting how intricately and how in great details astronomy has been documented by Vedic sages. Let's take two very interesting examples, or three maybe. The closest star to Earth is known as Alpha Centauri. It's about 4.2 light years away from us and is a mere dot in the sky. Do you know what this star is called in Indian culture? The star is astonishingly named Mitra. Now what is a Mitra? A Mitra is a friend. A friend is a person who's close to you. So do you see how a dot in the sky is studied and then you name it and I'm just getting started here the largest star that we know about or the largest object that mankind has ever known is an object is a star named Antares it's 40,000 times the size of our own Sun probably two times bigger than our entire solar system but it's not the brightest object in the sky. In fact, uh, it's not even the, in the first 15 brightest objects. If you look at uh, the sky from the naked eye, as, us, as our ancient sages were looking at it, you'll not even notice it. The brightest object is Sirius or Venus. But this star, Antares, has been named as Jeshta which translates into the Great One. How did our sages know about this? How did they know that the closest star is Alpha Centauri and you have to name it Mitra? How did they know that the largest star is Antares and you have to name it Jeshta? Isn't it baffling? Not, I, I won't stop here. This is a very, very unique example that I'm about to give. When you go to South India, marriages are a ritual that are still performed with the kind of detail they used to be performed. And a husband and wife are often called Arundhati and Vashishta. This is after name of a star. This star is in the Ursa constellation and you can see it uh, at 31 degrees north in the night. Now when you look at it you would say Indian sages were fools. Why did they name one star as by two names calling it Arundhati and Vashishta? But this is this strange case was solved when the Hubble was invented. When the scientists looked at this particular star they, find, they found out that this is not one star but there were actually two stars which were not visible to the naked eye it was only visible through a telescope so they found out these two stars
were named aptly by the Indian sages as one as Arundhati and one as Vashishta. Now this star, which is actually two stars now, is actually a bipolar twin star system. Now there are several twin star systems in the sky, in the space. But what you will notice is, and all of them are named by two names by the Indian sages. Especially Brahmagupta did a thorough research and discovered more than 100 such twin star bipolar star systems. These star systems have a particular way of revolving around each other. So one star stays fixed and the other star, like a satellite, like moon goes around our earth, revolves around this particular star. So suppose if I say there is a star system called Devika and Vaishani, but this Devika and Vaishani, Devika stays in the center and Vaishani revolves around it. Why don't we use this in the marriage? But it would be kind of odd if from the couple one stays and the other keeps revolving around it. Why was Arundhati and Vashishta chosen? Because this is the only twin star system in the sky, in the space, that goes around like this. Both the stars revolve around the other. And that's how marriages should be. It should not be centered around a particular individual. Now leave the marriage part, but imagine how on earth without a telescope, without these modern machines, without a computer, was a sage in India that lived roughly 2000 years ago, able to look from his naked eye that A, this is not a single star, there are two stars, and B, that these stars revolve around each other. Thus, this is a perfect example to be quoted while one is tying the marital knot. How? were these people who were always in touch with spirituality, who were always meditating, how were they able to get such intricate details? The answer, my dear friends, lies in the very fact that in India, spirituality and science have never been separated. In fact, spiritual evolution always meant that you discover you discover the truth and the new truth and the new truth. It was a continuous process of evolution. And that is why in our civilization, we don't have one book. We have so many viewpoints. We have everything. You can believe in all of them. You cannot believe in anyone. And that is the beauty of this great Vedic culture. In the next episode, I would try and elucidate to you more such examples and soon we will come down to as to how all this knowledge, all this information and all this wisdom was achieved by those sages at that time. And you will be thrilled to know as what were the basic principles of science, of how the laws of gravity were defined some 1100 years before Newton, as to how the theories of Copernicus and Galileo were not only what were were not invented by Europeans but actually by Indians. Just to give you one last example, the first statue that we produced, the first murti, was of the Varha avatar. Now Varha avatar. I'll not go into the mythological detail, is a boar that saves the earth when it's drowning. This is a statue roughly 4,000 years old, drowning in some uh, ocean for some reason. I'm not going into detail some other time. But then this Varavtar comes and he's a boar and he lifts the earth on his snout. What's interesting is that still you lay claim that Galileo and Copernicus found out that the planet was round. If you look at that statue, you will notice that 4,000 years ago, Indians knew the shape of the earth precisely. That it's not round, but it's geoid. 
So, through these videos, it will be very interesting to interact with all of you people. And I would like that you don't believe all of my uh, arguments or what I'm saying, but you doubt it. And send me your questions, your doubts, your queries on the email or on this website directly. Thank you.